Hi friends, how are you all? I hope you had a good start for the new year and thanks a lot for encouraging me to make more videos and a very sorry for delay in upload. Now let's get started. In our last session, we have got basic idea on how Microsoft was using SQL Server database project to design database related projects. So we had a look at Wild World Importers Data Warehouse and the objects involved in data warehouse design and how Microsoft used a SQL Server database project template to design these objects, right? So in this session, before we go and look into ETL design, I would like to show you um, and give you a overall brief introduction about um, data warehouse development lifecycle. So let's try to understand that first, um, just to get um, a basic idea on how um, everything um, ties together and works together. So, so what's the first step in data warehouse development lifecycle? So obviously in any, not only in the data warehouse design, in any project, whether it's an application or ETL or any other task or any project, the first step is obviously um, requirement analysis, right? So first step is requirement analysis. In that requirement analysis, we will know uh, what tables are required and what um, data we need to build a report. So here, our requirement is to build reports, right? As a BI developer, obviously our ultimate goal is to design reports. So to build that reports to enable um, underlying source to build reports, we have to come up with some solution. So that's where it started, it will start. So once we have done with the requirement analysis, we will come up with um, dimensions and fact tables. So as I said, dimensions are non-numeric related data, which is fixed, mostly fixed and facts are numeric related measures information. So where the transaction information and um, facts usually change on a daily basis and um, tables doesn't, dimension tables doesn't uh, uh, frequently change, but uh, sometimes these also change, but not frequently. So in the requirement analysis, we identify the source systems of our data warehouse. So what's our source system for this uh, data warehouse? Our source system is while we're importers, right? For data warehouse, uh, while we're importers data warehouse. So this is um, the application database and this is our data warehouse. So we have created, we have come up with all these different di dimension tables and fact tables and a model like a star schema model or a snowflake schema model that's a part of data warehouse um, design thing. So this is our first step. So let's say dimension tables and fact tables creation is our first step. So that's how this project starts. So when Microsoft start development of this data warehouse, so they will first identify the dimensions and facts out of source system, out of these application tables. So they create, they have created these tables for dimensions and these tables for facts, right? Okay, now the next step is to load, populate data into these dimensions and facts. So in order to do that, we have to come up with uh, a framework, ETL framework. So now let's go to, so before we create, before they create all these other objects, they first need to identify or come up with a framework, ETL framework. Now this is the time to look at ETL design. So we have to design an ETL framework to populate data into these dimensions and facts. So now let's go to uh, how Microsoft created that ETL design. Now go to our samples folder uh, where we downloaded our samples, SQL Server samples, and um, go to Wildwood Importers. And here you will see WWI-SSIS. So let's go and open this solution. So here let's try to explore. So go to Solution Explorer and you will see connection managers, a destination, and the source. So destination is showing as error 
because we haven't created data warehouse in our uh, SQL Server instance, right? So before we create like uh, ultimate goal is to build our database in our SQL Server instance, but uh, because we are still in understanding phase and still in development stage, so we don't have our data warehouse in our uh, SQL Server yet. So now let's try to understand how Microsoft has created ETL framework to populate data warehouse. So, uh, so let's ignore um, the overall um, design for now. And now let's focus on one dimension loading first. So let's try to look at load CT dimension now. So now when we expand this, it shows all the workflow that Microsoft has designed. First, they are assigning city table to a variable called table name. So they are assigning city table to a variable table name. And then they are getting lineage key. So as I said, lineage key is indicates uh, the latest ETL load date, right? So in order to get that latest load key, we have to pass parameters like the table that we are trying to populate and the target ETL cutoff time. That means the current ETL cutoff time. So we are passing these two as input parameters to integration dot get lineage key store procedure in the store in the data warehouse. So so here let's try to understand a bit more. So we don't have this data warehouse yet, right? So let's go to previous step. So I want to design this ETL project. So now I want to create city dimension. So that's why I have set city dimension into a table, okay? And then I, in order to populate that city dimension, I need to, what's the next step? I need a source query, right? I need a source query. So let's go to source query step first and then try to understand this. So what's our source query here? So this is lineage key and this is truncate table and this is uh, last city ETL cutoff time. And these three are not related to loading, right? So this is extract updated city data to staging. Yes, so this is the loading step. So we are extracting updated city data to staging table. So, but in the first step, as we uh, w will not have any data in our um, staging table, it will load all the data into uh, staging environment. And the second uh, ETL run, it uh, identifies, it gets only updated information and then it populates into staging. So now let's go to this and let's go to first source. So now, how are they getting city updates? So they are calling a store procedure that is integration dot get city updates and they're passing parameters and that parameters you can see here, they're passing last cutoff time and new cutoff time. So last cutoff time is the um, last ETL load date time and the new cutoff time is the current ETL uh, load date. So they are passing those two parameters to the store procedure and the results uh, from the store procedure is this. So, so basically they are relying on a store procedure to get that data. So where do they have this store procedure? They have this store procedure in source database. It's not data warehouse database. It's a application database, while word importer source DB, right? So now let's go to source DB connection. You will find that database details. So it is while word importers. So let's go to while word importers application database now. So this one database and then while word importers and then tables. So here you will see all application tables and when you go to programmability store procedures, then you will see all store procedures. So here under integration schema, you have 
you see all the store procedures they are using for ETL. So they have created here. Now let's try to open one uh, store procedure script create to and let's try to understand how they have uh, created um, this store procedure. So they have created um, they are passing two parameters like uh, I showed you last cutoff time and new cutoff time and then um, they initial load date they have declared initial load date when there is no uh, when they are running for the first time and then they created some temporary table and um, the source queries to populate that staging data. So this is our source and uh, this is uh, first need to find any country changes that have occurred since initial load. So basically what I'm trying to show you here is uh, so this is how we work like uh, so we first write our queries. So this query gets data from application database like application cities state province it joins application related uh, tables to populate our dimension so we write these queries and we design uh, the whole batch sql script and whether it doesn't matter whether we directly use this in uh, ssis or we create um, store procedure like this and we use st store procedure in the etl so that's up to us but it's a good practice to maintain um, source in the database so that whenever we receive any application changes or anything, we can directly do that in um, SQL Server um, instead of ETL in ETL package, right? So, so this is how Microsoft is following to design a data warehouse solutions. So they have created these store procedures in the application database, and uh, they are using these store procedures to get a data. Uh, to populate data warehouse, right? So this is where they are populating um, delta data into staging environment. And once um, staging environment is populated, they are migrating that staging environment into data warehouse uh, dimension here in city dimension. So here they are using data warehouse um, database and they are again calling store procedures to populate uh, staged information into city dimension. So we can look into it later uh, when we publish our data warehouse into our SQL server. They have first assigning a um, dimension to a table so that they can use this to get a lineage key and then they are truncating table and then they are getting last ETL cutoff time and then they are populating um, staging environment using the source system queries and then they migrating that staged environment data into um, final dimension table. So, so this is for city dimension and let's go and look into customer dimension now. So you will find similar structure for this as well. So here as well, they are setting table name and then following the same workflow. So this is called framework. So we have to come up with a framework where it, uh, it will be same for all the uh, populations, but uh, in reality, it will change. So based on our source systems. So here in Microsoft side, all the source system are in good structured. So we can get, fetch only Delta data from source systems by following some um, rules. But in reality, some source systems doesn't allow us to fetch incremental data or Delta data. So so then the framework uh, change for incremental load and full load. So this is how they have created um, ETL design. So in the next session, I'm gonna show you how these stored procedures are populating data into these tables and how what is first, what is next and how they, they are integrating data and populating these dimensions and facts.